So the very reason why we take people into the mountains is to make them experience the mystical dimension of the Himalayas. We are not a tourist company. <laughs> if you go there by yourself, the enormity of the mountains, the natural beauty of the mountains is so overwhelming that you will just be gaping at every rock and every peak because it's much more than your eye skin grasp. It's very difficult for you to understand what Himalayas, even physically. Right from my childhood I had seen many, many photographs of Himalayas, I had seen many documentaries about Himalayas. I had a huge picture of Himalayas in my mind. But the first time I went there, everything that I had in my mind was shrunk. What is actually there is far bigger than that. You know. It's very difficult even to take it all into your mind. So if you go there, generally the physical Himalaya itself is too overwhelming. It puts you down to your size. You'll become a small little human being, you know, like an ant you'll become. <laughs> Once you go and stand in front of Himalayas, you feel like an ant crawling up on the earth. <laughs> but the mystical dimension will be missed because you'll go about gaping at the beauty of Himalayas. So the very purpose of taking people on a trek like that is so that they can have an experience of a completely different dimension. If I go into these things, it'll go endlessly. Your question. Let me try to bring a little experience to you. This was many years ago. At that time I used to travel alone in Himalayas. But now traveling alone is impossible. If I go, I have a full ten bus loads of people with me. So I went to Kedar, beyond Kedar there's a place called Kanti Sarovar. Anybody been to Kedar? Nobody? Okay, that's good. Beyond Kedar there's a place called Kanti Sarovar. The legend goes like this, that Shiva and Parvati lived on the banks of Kanti Sarovar. The sages lived in Kedar. So sometimes they came down visiting. That's how the legend goes. So I wanted to see this Kanti Sarovar, I just went there and I just went and sat on a particular rock. <coughs> see, uh, me as a person, I have always avoided learning Sanskrit language. Though I had an immense liking towards the language, I avoided learning it when I had the opportunities to learn. Because the moment you learn Sanskrit, you will end up reading the scriptures. My own vision has never failed me even for a moment in my life. I didn't want to clutter myself with traditions and scriptures and other things. Right now everything that I do is simply purely from the source, not cluttered with any tradition, any scripture, any teaching, simply looking at life. So I didn't want to read scriptures, I consciously avoided Sanskrit language. And that day, I was sitting there alone. It's, in terms of visual beauty, it's the most incredible place that you can think of. You know, snow-clad mountain peaks, completely snow-clad everything. And there's a, you know, like a, like a lake which is about two kilometers, two square kilometers kind of lake. Absolutely still reflecting the mountains. It's, uh, you know, not, a, not even a blade of grass anywhere, everything is white and this patch of water reflecting the mountains, it's uh, indescribable really, even visually I'm saying. So I was just sitting there, my eyes open and uh, suddenly everything in my experience my physical body, the rock on which I'm sitting, the mountains, the lake, everything became sound. What was all form became everything into sound. 
No, that sounds crazy. When everything becomes sound, we call such a state as Rithambara Pragna. When you are in a Rithambara state, everything becomes sound. It's based on this Nada Brahma. And in my own voice, this song is going on like full volume. I can clearly feel that my mouth is shut. I am not singing, but it's my voice in full volume. The song is just going on. <laughs> <laughs> 